Hey everybody, it is the day, it's the Bullet Brawl day, checking my hair in the weird camera that's on a weird lag. You don't even know what it's like to see how you look in like a, in like a lag scenario. Why don't you try that sometime before you judge me. You can tell we're pro today. I got two buttons up. Actually, let's be honest. No, I'm not a two button up kind of guy. Never have been, never will be. The Bullet Brawl is commencing. First challenger, National Master, Addy Patty 2, just as high rated as me. Oh man, I'm nervous. Here we go. What does he want? What does he want? Does he want a French? He does want a French. Let's do it. Let's do this French. Okay, we're playing a McCutcheon, my favorito. Oh, wait a hold a tick. Is that even Can you even do that? Is that even possible? Right? I don't even know what he's doing right now. But okay, we're doing it. We are doing it. I'd love to do something else nasty here, but I want to avoid the queen trade, actually. We'll go back here. Um, I feel like this used to be something I knew yet no longer is it something I know. We'll get castled now, just to be sure that we're not about to get in some sort of tactical uh, mess. We'll take here. Okay, I actually, I wanted to do something a little bit more nasty. I'm gonna avoid the queen trade. Ooh, I almost mouse slipped queen of five. That's the truth, is that I almost mouse slipped We'll go attack the B-pawn. We're going to come in here. I don't even know what you're doing right now. We'll go get that guy. What? Can he do this? Apparently he can. Apparently he can and he's totally fine. Whoa. Uh oh, that was a mouse slip. <laughs> I won. I won somehow, some way by bullet brawling my way to a meat tornado victory. That was improbable. That was improbable. Not, not you know, Tom Cruise, Mission Impossible and the fight against aging, revenge against the disheartened Scientologist. No, I'm not talking about that, his upcoming sequel. I'm talking about the fact that I had no business winning that game. He knows it. I know it. If it makes him feel any better, I'm just as frustrated about it as he is. I don't think it makes him feel any better, though. I'm going to guess it doesn't make him feel any better. If I had to guess, it doesn't make him feel any better. Yes, I know. I am aware, au contraire. Uh, put the rook on the e-file, I guess. That seems to make sense. That seems to make sense to me. Uh, whoa, hold a tick. He's letting me bring the noise and the funk. Is that not, like, checkmate at some point? I mean, dear gosh. How am I not delivering the nastiness? Apparently, I'm not delivering anything. He defended it all. Almost as if he knew all along what was really going on. Almost as if he knew. One man, one desire to play the perfect game of bullet chess. One man, one desire. Almost as if he knew what was coming. I'm just like, I'm just like pushing right now. You know why? Because I want past pawns. I want it. I want it, yeah. All the boys, they want my Yaris. 
They try to look at my Yaris. They vaunt my Yaris. Whoa, that's a queen. Rematch town. Population us, bro. Let's see what you got here. Ooh. What in the world is going on now? Now we have transposed into a Pierce. Although it's a Tiger Pierce, and now he's playing a bad line. This is going to get real ugly real quick for him. Going to get real. What? It's like, what are you doing? I d no. No. Stop what you're doing right now. You're actually doing something. Oh, I want to just sack my queen and then mate him, but there is no mate. There is no mate. How frustrating is that? It's it's mooey frustrating. Mooey. Mooey, mooey frustrating. I don't know. This doesn't look very good for me, does it? It looks like something went wrong. That would be a bit of an understatement right now that something went wrong. Not exactly sure what to do here. Let's take here. Let's go over here. Hit the knight. Maybe come up. I don't know. I mean, all right. Should I just take it? No. Oh, yeah. Only go down the exchange now. That's fine. Oops, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, that was a mouse slip. I meant to play check. and Oh, no, I was just winning on the spot. I was just winning on the spot. Well, he's going to get this one. He deserves it, honestly, after my uh, first victory. So we're going to take a sip of the Meat Tornado. And uh, hope that every day is a Ron Swanson day. What was going on with me? I'm mouse slipping like crazy. I am mouse slipping like crazy. Hmm. Uh oh. Yeah, that wasn't good. I would love to just take something, but I can't. Nothing I take means anything anymore. How is he surviving this? Somehow he says he is. Am I not just... What is going on here? Night check? Wait... How am I how am I not just thrilled about this position, but somehow I'm not? I don't know. I'm gonna just take the draw, I guess. I, I didn't what else was I supposed to do here? I got under I lost too much time trying to solve it. Am I missing a win? Amazing, right? I mean because if I move the knight, he's putting the queen on this diagonal and now now the tables will turn. So, and giving check on d2, king b1, I don't think leads to anything. So, one of those, uh, and, you know, he didn't want to, after check, he doesn't want to play for a win. He has no business playing for a win. I mean, I have this check here. So, okay. So, the best of five continues. The best of five continues now with a Verisoff. Should be fun. Oops, I just blundered that pawn. E4, a little premature there, guys. That was an accident. Um, cackle. 
We're going to throw our hands up in the air and wave them like we just do not care. Um, is he checkmating me in some way, shape, or form? Probably. I don't even know. I don't even know anymore what he's doing. I guess now I'll come back. It doesn't really help my cause. Not really. Oh no, he's threatening something. Ah, what's he doing? He's threatening too much. We have to guard. We have to guard against it. Uh-oh. That was a blunder. He could have done something better, but he didn't. I feel like I'm just playing terribly right now. I don't even feel like I have any, like, rhythm. Honestly. Oh. Uh-huh. Oh. I, 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 feel, I feel really out of it all of a sudden. But okay, it's a tie game. It's a, it's a best of five free for all. And so we're going to just do our best to see if we can take it. This is it. This is for all the money right here. This is for all the money. All the marbles right here. This is for all the marbles. All the shenanigans. What? Oh, he could have he could have given check. I don't understand why he didn't. But okay, I guess he didn't want to. That would be the answer. He didn't want to. Do something kind of funky and weird. Oh, what am I doing? Ugh. Danny, pull it together. You're in a completely winning position. Not anymore, though. I was. I don't know what I was... That was just an absolutely horrific series of chess moves. Horrific series of events. How? How is he doing this? He's not really... He's not actually doing this. His light squares are too much of a problem. Even after my blunder. No. And somehow I managed. Not my best, best of five ever against uh, Addy Patty. Not my best. But we owe it to the Twitter followers. If you are not expecting me to challenge you, then, um, then that's probably because you don't follow me on Twitter. First person who followed me on Twitter, uh, liketh K. I'm going to find your username. You have told me your username, and I am going to go find you right now I uh, I swore I saw you you had challenged me before hmm I don't see you now so let me start it
All right, buddy. Thank you for following me on Twitter. Thank you for being a part of this bullet brawl today. And uh, let's do this thing. All right, we have D4, G6. We'll play nice. Ooh, he's playing weirdness. Love it. We love weirdness. We welcome weirdness on this show. If we didn't, how much of a hypocrite would I be? I was born to be weird. Actually, didn't we decide I was born to blunder? Yeah, that's right. I was born to blunder. Sorry, my bad. Um, but, you know, weird being weird is part of that, too. All right. Too many pieces, not enough time spent on development, Mr. Liketh. But I'm going to give you a best of three. Because, you know what? You've been super patient. As you said, you followed me on Twitter for a while. And you said you've challenged me for a few weeks, so I'm going to give you analysis and go over the game. Okay, so first of all, if you're playing a modern, which is with G6, um, it's it's not it's not normal to follow that with such an early E6. Okay, it is possible. Okay, in, in um, like hedgehog scenarios, you'll see the E pawn combined with the G pawn. Hikaru plays a lot of hedgehog and bullet, you know. But I don't recommend following Hikaru's opening repertoire from Bullet. Follow his real opening repertoire. That's my first pro tip. Um, and um, the uh, but even if you're going to play e6, it's normally played with d6 first, and there's concrete strategical reasons for that. You, you need to strengthen your control over the dark squares in the center, not to allow some of the tactics that might occur to get too out of control early on um you can play this modern move order with with c5 here it's totally playable uh good blitz opening i believe for black um d6 again after after d6 if i play like the line i normally play this tiger pierce you can play knight d7 you can play c6 if you're into the more modern development maintaining a flexible center of course if you play knight f6 i play a four now we're in exactly the opening we saw me playing as addy patty just a moment ago right which is um a mainline peer, so that's also totally fine for black. Uh, but, but again, combining it with e6 and then c6, uh, sorry, g6 and then e6, you know, this is actually not a bad move at all. This isn't just some bullet hyper aggressive move. I mean, you're you're you've made so many pawn moves, and you're one step away from you know being featured on Tom and Jerry as Swiss cheese. Hashtag Tom and Jerry reference. Hashtag first pop culture reference of the day. Um, so it's just this many holes is just not that great. And, and um, you know, white has an easy time probably if, as long as white is aggressive against these kind of systems, F4, F5, and E5, too many, too many weaknesses, not enough time. So, okay, so that'd be my first advice. But like I said, I'm giving you a rematch if you accept it. Aha, uh -huh, he does. You guys think I bear a striking resemblance to Ron Swanson? I think so. I just hope to have a resemblance to him in spirit and nature. Um, okay, so now we have an English with an early e4 going to be a positional regret of my opponent. I'm going to be aggressive and, and show him exactly what I mean by that. Again, a lot of players this level, I would, I would encourage you to... Okay, I should have just taken the rook. It would have been even faster. But... Uh, I encourage you to pl try to play your best moves. Don't just try to play fast because you know it's bullet chess. Better to play the best moves and then get under time pressure a little bit and then learn how to speed up from there than to just think that every time you play bullet, it's a, it's an absolute free-for-all of, of crazy of crazy moves with with uh, as long as you're moving fast. It's just it's not the way to get better at bullet over time. We talk about bullet and blitz being uh, the most... Honestly, they're the most concrete reflections of your intuitive knowledge in chess because your ability to move quickly is what defines a good blitz or bullet player. Uh, but but in order to move quickly and make good moves, you you have to obviously you know have a pretty good feel for what's going on in the position. So um, you're not gonna if you're if you change your your game every time you play blitz or bullet to just moving as fast as you can without really focusing on the quality of your moves, then bullet will always remain just like a separate game from your actual chess game. It's like when you play bullet, all it is is just a separate game from your actual chess game, and it's just, um, um, something that you, that, yeah, you play too fast, you get frustrated, you're like, oh, I just, you know, but just take a breath and try to play as, as best as you can. Try to play the highest quality game you can, and then push yourself to calculate faster, because there are exercises you can do to increase your calculation speeds. 
Um, and just getting better at chess will improve your, your first assessment of a position anyway. So naturally, you will get faster. You will become a stronger, faster player. But don't 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 go throwing caution to the wind every time you play Bull to Blitz. That's my um, advice to you. So getting some follow, followers here on Twitter who are jumping in, would like to play. I'm going to go ahead and take on the next person who said that he wanted to uh, get a game. Thank you for following me on Twitter. Again, if you're watching the show and you, and you want to get a game, you're much more likely to get that game if you if you can tweet at me. Just because we not because I'm biased to Twitter followers. It's because it's hard for hard to keep track of everybody that uh, that wants that wants to get in on this. So that was the that was the way we were able to kind of establish a little bit of a hierarchy, so to speak, um, and preventing me from getting spammed with challenges in the live server. So uh, here I'm playing Red Fisher fi- Red Fish Finder. I feel like I played Redfish Finder before, but maybe not. Maybe it was just in a past life. Maybe we were fishers of men in another life. Um, I don't know, but I like the username. I dig it. I dig the energy. I dig the vibe that he's putting down. I also like that I'm winning in this position. That's always a plus. Makes me feel good inside, real good. Let's be honest. We know I'm about as about as shallow as. Uh, as a cool drink of water. Liking that. Loving that piece. Gonna get me some Ron Swanson coffee in the midst. It's anticipation, Holmes. Anticipation when you just know what's gonna come next. I'm gonna go gobble up that pawn. Probably I'll give a little trade. Make it easy on everybody. Make it easy on everybody. Nope, he doesn't do it, but that's okay. We'll go get some pawns anyway. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir, Bob. Let's try to go for a cool checkmate here. I want to go for a really cool checkmate. How would that work? That check. Maybe that check. Let's get a really sweet checkmate here. I got him on the second rank. Let's get something awkward. Awkward and fancy. Schmancy. Fancy schmancy two by four. That's what I'm talking about, right? Um, you're welcome, Redfish Finder, and thank you for following me on Twitter. Thanks for the game, man. Let's review it. Um, let me know your username. Let me know your username if you're tweeting at me like many of you are right now. I, I, I don't know who you are just by the tweet. You got to say who what your username is, Okay. Um, no, it wasn't nerve wracking. Let's take a look. I'm sure, I'm sure. Uh, so one of the first things to know is if you're a regular D4 and then 2G3 player, uh, this advice will be useful for you. I hope you didn't just play something totally random only because you were on a bullet brawl. But okay, when, when, when C5 is played this early, you have to react somehow, either by protecting the pawn or by pushing or by taking. And actually all three are playable. But the main reason is that the last thing you want is for me to eliminate your center pawn for a wing pawn without any sort of compensation. I mean, if you're talking a Sicilian, you know, white uh, white gets compensation for the elimination of the wing pawn for the center pawn in, in the form of uh, an, an open file and, and a small lead in development. If we're talking about this game, you, you don't get any compensation because you also are losing time with the queen. So black is just positionally on a better foundation to start the game. And that's just going to hurt. Uh, and at most of the bullet games you might play, maybe this isn't a huge critical difference, but you know it makes Black's job pretty easy. So I was I was able to be aggressive with the pawns. Um, if you hadn't taken here, my next move would have just been e5 anyway. So possibly taking here was was actually not the worst thing in the world. But but now I'm able now I was able to get f5 and open the bishop. I meant to take with the pawn. Maybe bishop takes was just as good. I thought you might go here with tempo, and then I would back up. And, of course, I have the bishop pair and the ability to expand in the center. But, you know, taking with the pawn avoids the tempo, and then I, I, I still have pretty good control over the future dynamics of this opening, of this uh, position here. So what what happened? No, actually, oh, that's right. Yeah, you played here. I played f5, e3 here. You played here, takes, takes. Then I took here um, and then backed up. That's right, and then after knight c4, uh, we I traded and then played here, and then you gave me the piece, and so that that was obviously the most that was the that was the the biggest blunder. But uh, you know your nerves were getting to you, as you said, 
main thing I would encourage you to do, again, I think that's probably because it um, has already popped into my brain, so I'm just going to run with it, but it seems like the theme of today is going to be play high-quality moves. Play high-quality moves in bullet chess. Take a little more time. You know, maybe we should play 1-1 against some of the lower-rated players, give you a little more confidence that you're not just that I'm not just going to out-blitz you, right? That I'm not just going to mouse-feed you to death. You're like, yeah, Danny, you're going to tell us to take more time, and then you're just going to bludgeon us with the mouse, you know? Uh, but no, I mean, I just think it's the way to improve long-term, is to push yourself to try to play your openings. Try to actually make bullet games as useful as you believe you can make it, knowing that then you can push yourself to speed up. And as you get better, you'll do so. I've, I've given that advice to one of my students, and one of the only uh, students I have left that I work with, um, as well as many others. So um, lots more challenges coming in. We, uh, I'm looking for some more people here on... on uh, on uh, Twitch, we got Cheesis K Rice, and that means his name is Dutch Bagel. Dutch Bagel, welcome to the party. Thank you for tweeting me your username so that I know who you are, and now you have earned yourself a Bullet Brawl challenge. Let's do this thing. All right, I'm going to play this way. A lot of times, Knight F3 is also playable against Knight D7 because they're delaying the... Uh, the normal development, you have to be a little careful about things like Queen B6, but not anymore. Now, now Black has blundered as far as the strategical aspects of the opening go already. We'll chop it. We'll get cackled. We'll do it, right? We'll take it and play Knight G5. That's the idea. That's why a pawn isn't very takeable. Because if you take it, you actually make my control over F7 just a little bit more, a little bit more dangerous. Here comes the check, takes, check, and mate. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Now people are thinking, oh, is he confusing English with Australian accents? No, I'm not confusing it. I knew exactly what I was doing. I was switching. Now, an accent I've been working on is Lancashire. Wait, wait, Lancashire. Wait, um. Lancashire. Uh, my kids, my kids did a soccer camp last week, a British soccer camp with these young guys from Lancashire, Yorkshire, and then one from Ireland. They travel around the states over the summer and do these, you know, football camps to them, but they call it soccer because they're polite to all of us ignorant Americans. Um, and they do a soccer camp. And those accents were like, pew, like every day I was with the kids at the soccer camp trying to just absorb it, and I couldn't get it down. Honestly, it's embarrassing for someone who claims to be the accent master that I do. Okay, we got many more. In case I don't get to everybody, I just want to thank you all and let you know that you will. somebody will get to you at some point. Like, if not this lifetime, then the next. We have Arun Raji. We have Mate and Bake. By the way, fantastic username, Mate and Bake. We have, uh, we have I Play for Pawn. We have Sneerus. Oop, there's Sneerus. So here you go, buddy. You're welcome. Welcome to the big show, the big dance. What am I doing? I'm drinking coffee without giving you guys a Ron Watson, Ron Swanson flash. My apologies. All right, Sneeris. Are you going to tempt me? Are you going to tempt me into playing the, the first bullet simul of the day? No, you're not. You show up. You showed up. A little, a, a tad late. Day late and a dollar short, but that's okay. We'll, we'll play something a little funky. Slightly funky here. You still have a little check. Oh, he missed it. He's supposed to give check and then take e5. We'll back up and show you that trick because it is useful for everyone to know. And that's what we're really about here. We're about educating the children here. Much like PBS. Basically, the bullet brawls are on the same level of family-friendly fam fam family programming as, as any of your public broadcasting shows. I know what you're thinking, Danny. That's one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard. You offend people on a daily basis. I know. I know that's what you're thinking, but you're wrong. You're wrong. Okay, it's okay to be wrong. Let that sink in for a minute. I'm wrong every day. Like I said, I'm wrong for a living. All right, let's let's get an attack going here. Let's play f4 and f5 and then f6 and then rock his world. Like the little country girl he truly is. Not that he's a little country girl. He's probably from somewhere in Europe. Uh, it looks like, what, what kind of flag is that? I don't even know my flags. That's the other thing I heard, by the way. I heard that Magnus Carlsen had like... All these flags memorized as like a, just a wee youngin, right? How amazing is that? I don't know any flags. Like, I, I probably couldn't spot the American flag. Okay, that that's exaggerating slightly, but you get it. All right, we're going to take here, and then we'll play h5. We're going to take here. Let's see if we can pre-move this thing to victory. Pre-move. 
free move. Okay. So uh, let me show you the trick that happened in the opening here because that's actually useful. Um, okay, this move order, the correct move for me would be more like knight to c3. And then, of course, after knight to c3, we can get a classical still, a Sveshnikov. You can probably even get like a dragon in some positions, a Shevin Ingen. Um, okay, I've just been told by uh, my secretary that it's a uh, Nigerian flag. So there you go. Uh, and, uh, okay, so I didn't do that. I, I didn't play knight c3. It's bullet. I was a little bit messing around. So I played bishop d3, and after g6, then then went for the blunder the second time around. But e5 doesn't work neither here, nor does it work after what happened in the game, because after e5, black is supposed to play queen a5, check a ruski, and then you pick up the pawn with check. A very common trick in the Sicilian that you should never forget. Okay. Coffee done with today. Uh, we're going to try to get to a couple more Twitter followers before we get to some of the title players that have challenged me. We'll end this with some chess that uh, really uh, really scares everybody when I start blundering and, and losing rating points. Um, looking for the usernames of those who have tweeted at me. There's one, Mate and Bake. Welcome to the show, Mr. Mate and Bake. Um... Your move, Mr. Mate and Bake. Again, Arun Raji. Um, who else? Sneer, Aris Sarmento. Um, Chris, Cristobal Fernandez 1. Jiggernaut. I'm sorry, I may not get to everybody today. Doing my best. Oops, he moved. Look at that. I just gave him a massive time advantage. He's going to try to flag me, as he should. As he should, he should try to flag me. So we'll see if I can play just fast enough after after spotting my opponent 21, 21 seconds. Let's blow this thing up. Let's blow this thing up. Just like Tony Stark taught me to. Take it all. Push it. Push it. I'm trying to get developed. I'd like to grab the B2 pawn. I probably could have grabbed it for the last several moves, but I was patient. I wanted to get a little bit more developed. I don't know why, because it made me feel good. Okay, that's probably the honest, the honest answer there. So we'll go grab that guy. That's fun. And unfortunately for my opponent, he sort of self-made it. Mate and bake self-made it which I think we're on the verge of me now making an appropriate joke, so we'll back up and say nothing else on that matter. Uh, mate and Bake, you, uh, I think you, you, okay, so you start out with this move 2e5, which I think is actually a move against the Karo. It's actually a move. It's just, in your case, might have just been like an accidental pre-move or something. I don't even know. Um, but was not was not the best thing to do. Okay, but we transpose into a French, and this structure is actually totally normal as long as white plays c3 here. Again, if you're if you're an e4, e5 player mostly, and you're just at the beginner stages of chess, which judging by your rating, mate and bake, you, you may not, you know, you're, you're probably not a grandmaster. Um, remember something, that in the Rui Lopez, the, the bishop development to b5 has specific purposes. You know, you're, you're indirectly increasing your pressure on the e5 pawn by undermining the knight, which of course in the long term also supports the plan of c3 and d4, which is white's ultimate goal in the Rui Lopez to get this control over the center. So the problem is though that a lot of players, after they learn just the e4, e5 games, and you start to expand to facing other openings like a French or a Sicilian or whatever, you tend to do that. You tend to have the same sort of development plan where you bring the knight to f3 and then you put the bishop on b5. But in most of these cases, it's it's just wrong because in no scenario is giving up this light square bishop for this knight improving White's chances. And in most scenarios, it's improving blacks. Okay, giving up this bishop takes away your best attacker of the king side. Giving up this bishop also brings another pawn to the center, which once I undouble them, gives me another attacker of the center, as you saw in the game. And giving up this bishop only increases the value of my bishop, the light score bishop. So it sounds silly, but that's why I'm even just wasting a tempo to get you to give it up, because giving up that bishop is such a long-term problem. And I know for any advanced players watching this, they're like, oh, I hate when Danny talks about this stuff. This is really kind of fundamental knowledge of 
what's going on in a French structure or, you know, don't play the same Rui Lopez development against other openings, right? Kind of a no-brainer. But for a lot of players, it's actually a tough thing to transition out of because you've learned an opening. You learn, you know, that development pattern is a good one. You know, knight of three, get the light square bishop out, get castled. But then you start to face other openings and you're doing the same thing, but you're putting yourself at a disadvantage very early on. And so now I'm just, I'm taking on d4, happily expanding. So, so if we're evaluating what's happened, you know, this is this is just a better middle game for Black. Regardless of the concretes of this game, maybe I could have taken earlier or not, Black is already just super happy here. I've achieved everything I've ever wanted in the center. Your knights are being held at bay. It's like the tigers being held at bay by the whips. The pawns control what matters. Um, and with a closed center, is the fact that I'm a little bit behind in development that big of a deal over here? Not really. So, pro tip, eyebrow contest. Ready? Everybody go. One, two, three, four, five. I win. And you don't even know the rules of the game. You're welcome. Next player. Next song. David WW. Welcome. Welcome, Mr. David WW. With a rating of 9-11. Bless all those who we lost on that day. 9-11, right? There you go. I actually went to the 9-11 uh, monuments, which um, if you're anybody who's vis who, you know, Okay, if you live in New York, no big deal. But anybody who's visited New York pre 9 11, um, I, I, you know, many times playing in chess tournaments, you know, been to the top of both the Trade Center towers, um, all the other buildings too. So if you were ever there before and then to go there after, it's really, really a cool, uh, really kind of moving experience. So I recommend that. A little random sort of sentimental note of the day. Hashtag random sentimental note of the day. Bring the bishop back. I'm going to bring my queen up and try to get nasty on the diagonal. Nasty. He's a honey badger. He's getting nasty. On passant. Indeed. Indeed we shall. Uh, he's not really going to take f6 with the queen because then he gets checkmated. Uh, yeah. I'm going to need you to come in on Saturday. Well, he's defending everything, and I, I clearly have lacked any kind of knockout blow in this position. Either it existed and I didn't find it, or uh, or it didn't exist, right? Um, all right, we're just gonna we're gonna bring it, bring the heat on the seventh rank, and then get in that way. Oh no, we're not. He's gonna blunder the queen, and we're gonna take it take it home just like that with the pre move of rook f7. Okay, thank you, Mr. David W W. Who else we got? We got some title players waiting. Um, we had some higher rated title players waiting too, but I think they got tired of waiting for me. But okay, we'll uh, we'll take on Fide Master ZMA J23, who's much lower rated than me than he normally is, so he has a huge advantage in this brawl. Even if he gets one game out of the five, he probably gains rating points, so that's not fun. But you know what? That's life. If you don't want to be high rated, then don't get good at chess. Stop complaining. Am I right? If you don't want to be high rated, if you can't run with the big dog, stay on the porch. Isn't that something everybody's grandma said to them? And at the time they said it, it always felt demeaning. And you were like, why are you being mean to me, grandma? Right? I think everybody's had that experience. I believe everybody has had that experience. I really do. Ooh, I should have just played queen a5 last move. Oh, that would have been so much sweeter. I should have played queen a5 last move. Now I want to get my knight into c4. I don't know quite what to do. Oh, that wasn't right. That wasn't right. I'll go there. I'm, I'm really butchering this one. I really am. Yeah, that's what he should do. Yeah, I'm butchering. I'm butchering this one. I'm going to try to... Try to make it as weird as I can, but I, not my best showing right now. Not my best showing. I'm going to bring the queen over here. I wanted to play rook c3 last move, but the ba rook was saying, aha, he missed it. That was my trick. He didn't see it coming. I wanted to play rook c3 last move because the pawn was pinned. But it's okay that he missed it because I still, I got it next move. Ooh, he's forgetting that this guy's also hanging. We'll take it. Uh, thank you very much. Are we going to win? 
I like a spaghetti and meatball, a Luigi. What, talk about a, an overblown stereotype, right? Nobody with that accent actually meets, eats spaghetti and meatballs. What are we, living in the Godfather? Here we go. Early G4. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, boys. Here we go. F5's coming. And we like it, yeah? Do it, right. Nice. It's actually quite the amount of compensation here for my opponent. Not gonna lie. It's a little bit scary here. But it's only a little bit. Because, I don't know, do I really even care about that? I mean, maybe I do. Maybe I don't, though. Maybe I don't even care about that check. I'm going to take with check, and then what? NBD, homie. NBD, homie. I don't even care. I don't think you have a perpetual, do you? No. Does he have a perpetual? No! Ah! I avoided the perpetual only to lose my queen. Hashtag story of my life, right? <laughs> no! I wanted something more. I wanted something more. I wanted to win. I didn't want to draw. I wasn't even thinking ahead. I literally had no right to play on in that position. But that's what you do. That's how that's how uh, champions are made, and that's how... Uh, that's also... Uh, I don't know. I'm just going to take everything because I, I don't see a win for him. So if you don't see a win, then just keep taking stuff. It's my motto. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I was actually winning on the spot last move. I forgot. Well, I had a lot of mature for the queen. It was never that simple. I'll take two out of three. Don't mind if I do. Was I lost in both games? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Now, wallabies running about. Pin pieces protect perfectly. Pin pieces protect perfectly. In the outback. Right. Wallabies, dingoes, kangaroos, wallabies. Babies, Outback. That's like, a, that's like just all... There's only one word that really emphasizes the Australian accent. Absolutely. abso friggin -lutely. Boom. We're blowing this thing open. This is how the West was won right here, what you're watching. This is just... This is going to be... I think there were several moves that were winning there, FYI, including E3 of takes F4, but this is the fastest way to, to roam when it comes to uh, this position. When it comes to this position. Okay, I have, I can also give check, and if he comes up E3 check, should I just take it? Where's the win? I mean, check, E3 check, there's a million ways to checkmate here, right? I, so I don't know which way is the best. That's the thing. With a million ways to mate, a million ways to die. Isn't that a movie? I feel like it is. A million ways to die in the West. I'm actually, this is actually kind of tricky. The time. The time on this particular tickety is actually not so simple. Boom. Okay, a little bit sloppy. A little bit of a sloppy uh, win after being winning out of the opening. But, you know, pro tip for any Dragon players... In the Rook B8 line of this theory, this is some advanced knowledge. In the Rook B8 line, uh, black is 
Black is leaving the gambit of the exchange for the dark square bishop on the board a little longer. And um, the idea is to accelerate the threats of opening up this diagonal. So I'm leaving the gambit here longer with the idea of accelerating the threat of f5. Uh, so white has to deal with this. And, and the way you deal with this is with bishop to c4. Uh, bishop to c4 threatens bishop b3. So for example, if I overly if, if I overly aggressively expose this, e4 is met with bishop to b3. And now with with no tactics coming, it's um it's it's harder for me to justify opening up my my king side so early. Like I think even e3 can be met by queen g2 and there's stuff coming here. So um so that's the that's the way to be aware of Black's accelerated attack on the B file is to get the bishop to this diagonal here. Uh, in Blitz, I've lost sometimes to like crazy pawn C4 moves, but it's often because it's Blitz and you don't have time to figure it out. But uh, theoretically, I don't think White can play this way. So even like Knight F4, I think you know if they trade, you take and you save the exchange. Um, and if they take here, you're still more than happy with the compensation you're going to get on the dark squares. So. Uh, so, okay, it's not to say that the game was just over after f5, but it gets it gets pretty hairy for white. Uh, and the, the, you know, the, as soon as I got e4, the tactics here are out of control. I mean, there's there's all kinds of stuff. Like, after queen a5 and he takes it, I mean, even, even like, bishop takes c3 here, knight takes c3. These are all moves that are super close to winning. But I think queen takes a2 is the most simple. I mean, the truth is the way I did it. Do I have a... Did I have a, a concrete checkmate here that I missed? You know, something like check here, check, king up, knight f4. I don't see anything. I don't see any kind of mating net. So maybe what I did was fine, actually. I mean, I guess I'm just up a piece here and, and probably, and it was just winning even easier than I, than I did. But like I said, it got a little sloppy, but that's life sometimes. Sometimes things happen, right? Chess happens. That would be a good bumper sticker, right? So, um, all right, well, uh, we're getting pretty close to pulling the trigger time on uh, today's Bullet Brawl. I hope everybody has been enjoying the show and that you are uh, subscribing to us on Twitch, that you're following me on Twitter, and that overall you're just being a good person. You're, you're making a positive impact on things, and you're not, you know, you're not trolling the Internet. You know, you're not... Uh, you know, you're just you're being positive, and I like that about you. I assume that every one of our subscribers is a positive, positive dude. So, uh, all right, well, we're not going to get to everybody here. All right, looks like Elysium is back. Strong Fide Master, actually higher rated than me, and I haven't played him for a while, so we're going to end it with a title player brawl here against... Oh, I was going to play Elysium, but now he's gone. I was going to play Elysium, but he disappeared. He disappeared on me. And, uh, so no. So no, we won't. We are, uh, gonna have to pull the trigger today again. The, the several people on Twitter that I didn't get to, my apologies. Next week. Next week, let's do this. And uh, I'll see everybody around on chess.com.